Hey there, Jen Dice here for Status Coup, and I'm here with an update for you about the Tara Reid allegations against Joe Biden. As you know, Tara Reid was a Senate staffer of then-Senator Joe Biden back in 1993, and she accuses him of sexually assaulting her at the time. This story really didn't take off right away. It took off in, in progressive spaces, it took off among independent media, but the mainstream media really wasn't covering it, which, which disgusted a lot of people. Well, finally, the mainstream media is covering it, mostly, in my opinion, due to recent revelations that add even more credibility to Tara Reid's story, especially her former neighbor who lived around her and I believe in 1995 to 1996 who says that Tara Reid told her specific details about the alleged assault by Joe Biden at the time. So this neighbor has now shared her story with the Business Insider and so CNN and other outlets are picking up the story. That might be some cause for celebration. Uh, it's not really because it took them so long and they are still using spin and using talking points and not covering it nearly as much as they should. They're not really giving the story its due. They're covering it sort of because they have to. We also have prominent Democrats like Kirsten Gillibrand and Stacey Abrams who are still supporting Joe Biden. These are prominent Me Too supporters, as they should be. Kirsten Gillibrand was particularly harsh against the allegations against Al Franken but she's still in support of Joe Biden, which we will get into. And I believe it comes down to a lot of it, the fact that the Joe Biden campaign has been circulating specific talking points that they have issued to prominent Democrats and Democratic operatives. And it will come as no surprise to you that there are certain, uh, let's say, potential vice presidential candidates who are out there literally, and I do mean literally, spewing these exact talking points by the Joe Biden campaign. Let's dive into that so you can see how ridiculous this is. By the way, it's, it's not at all uncommon for campaigns to issue talking points. That's very, very common. But what they are doing is particularly callous and uses untrue spin about a sexual assault case. It's, it's really stomach turning. So this is reporting out of BuzzFeed News by Ruby Kramer. Democrats will have to answer questions about Tara Reid. The Biden campaign is advising them to say her story did not happen. The subhead here, Joe Biden has yet to personally address Tara Reid's sexual assault allegation, but his campaign has circulated talking points. I also want to say Rosie Gray worked on this as well. While Joe Biden has remained publicly silent about a sexual assault allegation made against him, his presidential campaign has sought to coordinate and unify Democratic messaging on the matter, advising surrogates earlier this month to say that the allegation did not happen. The Biden campaign circulated talking points among top Democratic supporters shortly after the New York Times published a story earlier this month about the allegation by Tara Reid, a former staff assistant in Biden's Senate office who says he assaulted her in 1993. With good news and bad, talking points are standard fare on presidential campaigns. Oh, and before I move on, I want to point out, pay attention to this part about the New York Times story because that plays a role here. In substance, the private guidance largely hews to the sole public statement on the matter from Biden's deputy campaign manager, Kate Bedingfield. But the messaging shows that while Biden has stayed quiet on the allegations on the eve of his nomination, aides were talk taking the claim seriously enough behind the scenes to coordinate messaging among other Democrats to try to cast the matter as one that's been thoroughly vetted and determined to be unfounded. All right, here is part of the talking points here, and the New York Times comes up again. Biden believes that all women have the right to be heard and to have their claims thoroughly reviewed, the talking points read, according to a copy sent to two Democratic operatives. In this case, a thorough review by the New York Times has led to the truth. This incident did not happen. So the New York Times piece in question, and let me open it up for you, 
did not come to that conclusion. Examining Tara Reid's sexual assault allegation against Joe Biden. This is something we've already reported on, so I'm not going to go in depth into it. It is worth noting that someone who worked on this story is Sidney Ember, who is a known uh, hater, <laughs> let's say, of Bernie Sanders. So it's interesting uh, in particular that she was put on this story, but that's neither here nor there. So this this New York Times story did not, in fact, come to the conclusion that the allegations were um, unfounded. So again, the talking points say, in this case, a thorough review by the New York Times has led to the truth. This incident did not happen. Well, that did not happen. The New York Times did not come to that conclusion. But that talking point will show up again. Here's the bottom line, they read. Vice President Joe Biden has spent over 40 years in public life, 36 years in the Senate, seven Senate campaigns, two previous presidential runs, two vice presidential campaigns, and eight years in the White House. There has never been a complaint, allegation, hint, or rumor of any impropriety or inappropriate conduct like this regarding him ever, which is not true. There are eight allegations against Joe Biden, not of sexual assault, but of making women feel uncomfortable, sexual harassment. That's not nothing. That's not what they're painting this out to be. And when you add the uh, allegation of sexual assault on top of that, it really just, it, it makes you wonder, why would anyone just blindly follow Joe Biden's campaign talking points? Of course they do. It's not a surprise. The Democratic Party is corrupt. But still, you have to wonder on a, a human level, how could you say things that aren't true just to protect a politician? It's a politician. Joe Biden is not a politician. He's not a hero. He's not um, someone to be held on a pedestal. He's a politician. And if he's not right for us, and he's not, he has to go. If he sexually harassed women or sexually assaulted women, as the allegations and accusations out there say he has, he needs to go. He needs to be replaced. He needs to step down. Let's get back here. Democrats are in an increasingly precarious position as reporters assess Reid's allegation. By any measure of the Me Too movement that has seen the Democratic Party embrace Believe Women as a mantra, Reid 56 has provided a serious account disputed by Biden's campaign and former senior staffers who worked in his office in 1993, but corroborated in part by people she told about the incident in the 1990s. This week, after Reed said her late mother had called Larry King live about the incident, The Intercept published a transcript and later they published a video showing she called in and asked for advice about her daughter's negative experience with a prominent senator. So I'm not going to read this entire thing to you. The guidance uh, that the Biden campaign sent out also spins uh, Biden's history, they say, of being a fierce advocate for women, and they call the claims un unequivocally untrue. Again, the allegation of Reid is that Biden digitally penetrated her in a Senate hallway and told her, you are nothing to me. So these are things that we've reported on here at the bottom already. I encourage you to watch all of the Tara Reid videos that we have done. I'm going to move on here to some of the Democrats reacting and use, see if you can spot some of these talking points. I know that, I know that one of them in particular will really, really stand out to you. This is out of the Washington Post. I'm reading it from Instapaper so you don't have to look at all the ads. Democrats react to Biden's assault allegation with pleas for explanation or with silence. Joe Biden faced growing calls from Democrats on Tuesday to address claims made by Tara Reid, a former aide in his Senate office who was accused Biden of sexually assaulting her in the early 1990s. As I said, um, pressure grew after the Business Insider reported that two additional women, including a former neighbor, had corroborated part of the accusations to, um, to them. Biden has not 
address the accusations. Biden declined a request for an interview. He has also, and this is something I have not reported on yet, but is an important uh, detail here. He has also declined to release his Senate papers, which are being held at the University of Delaware and could shed light on personnel issues. His campaign has forcibly denied Reed's claims. So some Democrats on Tuesday said his campaign's denials were insufficient given the explosiveness of the assault accusation. So Gilda Cobb Hunter, president of the National Black Caucus of State Legislators, uh, said, I don't want to minimize what happened to her. I've spent too many years doing this work to do that. I think he needs to say something forceful so that we can try to put it behind us. Well, here you see the bias in this. She just wants someone, <clears throat> not just someone, she wants Joe Biden to come forward and say something so that they can put it behind them. They don't want to know the truth. If any of them do call for Joe Biden to come forward and say something, it's only so that they can put this incident, incident, this accusation, these allegations behind them. They don't really want the truth. They just want it to go away because it's politically inconvenient. So I don't know if you consider it better or worse, but other Democrats are either saying nothing or saying his campaign talking points. Let's see here. It is worth noting that Claire Sandberg, formerly of the Bernie Sanders campaign, she was national organizing director, said, there is simply no moral justification for Biden to continue as the presumptive nominee. Out of respect for survivors and for the good of the country, he should withdraw from the race. And I am with Claire. I agree with her position personally, but I also think that Bernie Sanders needs to be held to account and he needs to say something as well. I understand that it's politically inconvenient, and I understand that Bernie Sanders' main fear is of Donald Trump. At the same time, it's morally and um, for the good of the country, for the good of his supporters, he needs to say something about the allegations. It's not on Bernie Sanders' shoulder, but it's disappointing that he has not said anything or withdrawn his um, endorsement of Joe Biden, or at least put his endorsement on hold. So here we have Democrats who are speaking out. So one major exception was Senator Kirsten Gillibrand, who issued a strong defense of Biden. Gillibrand was the first senator to call for Senator Al Franken to resign two years ago after the Minnesota Democrat was accused of touching and kissing several women without their permission. He strongly denied the allegations. So Gillibrand said of these allegations, Vice President Biden has vehemently denied these allegations, and I support Vice President Biden. She said a little bit more than that. Let's go on over here to the Hills reporting. She said, so when we say believe women, it's for this, ex the ex this explicit intention of making sure there's space for all women to come forward to speak their truth, to be heard. And in this allegation, that is what Tara Reid has done. She has come forward, she has spoken, and they have done an investigation in several outlets. These investigations, Vice President Biden has called for himself. Well, I'm sorry, but it doesn't just need to be an investigation in a news outlet, a biased news outlet. It needs to be a real investigation with real calls for him to address this with real consequences. And again, Gillibrand said, no, I, and I stand by Vice President Biden. So she's saying no to whether it was a contradiction um, going from Christine, the way they handled Christine Blasey Ford's allegations of sexual assault against Brett Kavanaugh versus not speaking out on Tara Reid's behalf. So her answer to that was no, and I stand by Vice President Biden. He has devoted his life to supporting women and has vehemently denied this allegation. Now, let's go to Stacey Abrams. And this, if you remember from way back in the opening where I said, can you guess someone who, whose name has been swirling around for vice president, can you guess what they have said about this? Well, here we go. 
One of the few potential running mates to respond was former Georgia gubernatorial nominee Stacey Abrams. She said, I believe women deserve to be heard, and I believe that has happened here, Abrams said in a statement. The allegations have been heard and looked into, and for too many women, that is often not the case. She referred to a newspaper to newspaper articles about Reed's accusations and said none of them suggests anything other than what I already know about Joe Biden, that he will make women proud as the next president of the United States. There's more to Stacey Abrams' statement, and I'm actually going to play a clip of her on CNN talking about these allegations. And remember back to when we talked about Joe Biden's talking points, Stacey Abrams is basically going to repeat them word for word. Let's have a listen. Assault allegation against Joe Biden. The accuser, her name is Tara Reid, tells CNN that the alleged incident happened in 1993 while she was working as an aide in Biden's Senate office. She is claiming that she was delivering Biden a duffel bag and says that Biden had her up against the wall in a corridor uh, on the hill and violated her with his fingers. Now, CNN has now, has now spoken on the record with her former neighbor who says Reid told her about the allegation within a few years of the alleged incident. Biden's campaign says, untrue, never happened. Is this a credible allegation? I believe that women deserve to be heard, and I believe that they need to be listened to. But I also believe that those allegations have to be investigated by credible sources. The New York Times did a deep investigation, and they found that the accusation was not credible. I believe... There's that New York Times talking point. Joe Biden. I believe that he is a person who has demonstrated that his love of family, his love of our community has been made perfectly clear through his work as a congressional leader and as an American leader. I know Joe Biden and I think that he is telling the truth and that this did not happen. So in, in 2018, you tweeted it was shameful that Brett Kavanaugh's Supreme Court nomination was being rushed forward and survivors of violence like Christine Blasey Ford deserve to have their voices heard. Are you applying a different standard now? Not at all. I believe then and I believe now that women deserve to be heard because too often they are not. And Tara Reid deserved to have her story listened to and investigated. What was happening to Christine Blasey Ford was that there was no investigation. There was a rush to move the conversation forward so that no investigation was conducted. And as I said, I believe that there was those allegations needed to be investigated. There you have it. Stacey Abrams is a talking point machine. And that's why I was so kind of p pointing out that New York Times talking point so much because the New York Times did not find what they are saying that it found. They're not saying, you know, what Joe Biden's campaign said that it found that it wasn't credible, that, you know, that's the end of the story, that because the New York Times investigated something, that that's the end of it. First of all, that wasn't the conclusion they came to. Second of all, the New York Times is not the law. The New York Times is a, a corporate news outlet. So that someone like Stacey Abrams could go out there and use that talking point, she's a smart woman. But where are her morals right now? It gets even more, well, not even more disappointing, just disappointment on top of disappointment. There are also several women's groups who are completely silent on the assault accusation. This is reporting out of the Daily Beast. They contacted 10 top national pro-women organizations for the story, including Emily's List, Planned Parenthood, Action Fund, NARL, Pro-Choice America, and the National Organization for Women. Most organizations did not respond to a detailed request for comments about the allegation by Tara Reid, a former staff assistant in Biden's Senate office who accused the former vice president of forcibly penetrating her with his fingers in the early 1990s. Others replied and did not provide a statement. Oh, and take a look at this one. One prominent women's group, political group, cited a scheduling conflict and asked to be kept in mind for other opportunities, exclamation point, when pressed if the following day would work better, an associate said it would not, citing another scheduling conflict. The response 
in the mainstream media to Tara Reid's accusations is disgusting. The lies from the Joe Biden campaign. So Joe Biden, if you have nothing to hide, then why are you lying about the conclusion the New York Times article came to? They didn't come to a conclusion and that's not their role anyway. That's disgusting. That Kirsten Gillibrand and especially Stacey Abrams, because Stacey Abrams used very specific parts of these talking points, those reactions are disgusting. That Kirsten Gillibrand went after Al Franken and others and was such a fearful Me Too advocate and now all of a sudden, because of political inconvenience, she's not being supportive anymore. It's disgusting. The fact that pro-women groups, the most prevalent ones in the entire world, are silent is disgusting and disturbing. As I said, finally, we have CNN and others covering this. We have mainstream media who are covering Tara Reid's allegations. But it was only because they were forced to. It was only because, finally, they were at a point where their readers are going to start asking questions, even, even the centrist readers, even you know those who do support Joe Biden. There are questions out there. And it's important that Tara Reid's voice is heard. So we will keep up to date on this story. We will keep reporting on it. And um, hope you're staying well in this time of, of COVID. Please like this video, share it around, and consider becoming a member of Status Coup for just $5 a month. StatusCoup.com slash join. You get lots of cool stuff. All right, until next time. Bye-bye.